Good day fellow investors, you asked for this analysis during the Adobe video, so let's go with the Disney stock analysis. And this is a very funny stock for me to analyze because I have covered it in the past and the last time I said in April 2020 that the stock is a good buy because if the Disney Plus and all the direct-to-consumer is valued as Netflix, then the stock should at least double. And as you can see here, the stock price was 105 when I made the video. And from here, April 2020, it did almost double as the stock went up 81%, given that everyone was so excited about the new Netflix part of Disney. Of course, unfortunately, then also Netflix and everything, the, all the tech and everything excitement started to subdue and Disney is back where it was when I made the video. So nothing happened here if you didn't solve, but the price is now, as I'm filming this, 105, which is exactly what it was when I made this video two years ago. So no returns there for Disney. However, if we look at Morningstar, their fair value for the company is 70% higher, 65 than the current position. The economic mode is wide, great business, great everything. So let's see whether Disney is a buy now. We'll discuss the business, mostly the last earnings, then make a stock valuation with our template that we always do. So you can download this template in the link in the description below, Disney, and of course, conclude with an investment conclusion. If you like the stock analysis, stock analyze that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't. Let's dig into Disney. So if we look at revenues really, really good over the last six months, 29% as lockdowns are over, as parks are opening, as more and more customers are joining to the Disney Plus and everything, everything looks really, really good but then the stock goes lower and lower. Even earnings per share are up 93%, so really, really good. Why the hell is the stock going down, one would ask. Operating income is much, much higher, almost double over the quarter, so really, really high. Six months operating income of 7 billion, that is huge. But of course, direct-to-consumer is eating money, so it is destroying one and a half billion so that operating income we have seen before is even higher than this nine billion into the first six months so if they just can break even on direct to consumer that would already be great and the key here is netflix the number of subscribers declined and this is disney so they increased 33 percent over a year. And I made the video discussing these streamers in the market, so let's just look as it was a short. Good day fellow investors, just short video explaining the risk of investing in a sector and how to evaluate it. We're talking about streamers that spent huge amounts of money on content. 220 billion spent in 2021, Netflix will spend 19 billion on content, and if we put that into a mathematical table, all the streamers around it are spending one thousand per family because 200 250 million families are there for the market so 1000 spent per family to get 10 to 50 per month that we families spent on these streaming services is that a business that will survive if you spend 1000 to get 10 let's say on average 20 not really. And yes, they are fighting the game, subscribers, this, or growing extremely fast, sounds exciting. But when you see the sector, it looks like the airline sector where there is never a good return on capital. And this is the danger in the streamers environment. And of course, I wrongly used the monthly payments, not yearly payments, but still, if you account for costs and everything, then the best the companies can hope is for the a monthly payment to be the profit. The profit, net profit margin of 7, 10%. So I was pretty okay on that. So nothing wrong with the video. But yes, companies are spending a thousand per home to maybe have profits of 25, 30, 40 per home, which is not a smart business. High competition, thus it can get ugly as we are seeing with Netflix and Disney. 
However, there will be one winner that will make an ecosystem, like Apple is the king of phones, like Amazon is the king of distribution, there will likely be one winner. And if that is Disney, that has the power from the other businesses and the brands to be a winner, then it will be the Morningstar 170 rating. And if we look at Disney and we want to make a valuation, we have to look at the earnings power. We have seen 6 billion operating 7, 8. When those direct-to-consumer switch to profits, it can be easily more. We can and see here how before the merger free cash flows were pretty pretty high those were used to lower shares then merging and now shares are higher I think they also issued something at the wrong moment in time but cash flows are not yet picked up due to all the issues but can likely pick up and we have to focus on that earnings power I've taken a look at cash flows over the last six months. So we have cash provided from operations, 1.5 billion. We have huge investments in content. So 2.2 billion, which is a lot. So if they just narrow it down to amortization and just keep it stable, that's already 3.7 billion in the making. Plus they invested huge money into parks, 2 billion, and they even paid down debt. So even in this week scenarios for Disney, they collected approximately 6 billion. So let's say 5 billion in six months, that's 10 billion of value created this year likely to be much higher next years. And if we look at projections of growth forward, this is again from Morningstar, they have these good overviews of what's going on with the business. So they expect revenue growth of 11% for the next four years and a little bit slowing down for 2024, 2026. So slowing down, but 11% for the first five years. Then they also project huge growth with parks that are just at 50% of what it was and higher growth and higher margins there. Especially very positive of the margins that will more than triple. And if that happens, you can expect a lot of billions in free cash flows as it was the case in 2018. The number of shares is uh, 1.8 billion, 1.82 billion. So we have to divide the 12 billion, let's take 12 billion as a valuation. So earnings power potential next year for Disney 12 billion so that we start valuing it from there. 12 billion divided by 1.8 billion shares gives me a free cash flow per share of 6.59 and I'll use that for valuing Disney. And that's their earnings potential and if they grow at the value of 10% and 15, 10% in the first five years and let's say the value then slows down to 5% with a discount rate of 10% for an expected return and the terminal multiple, let's say 15 to be conservative, and they use those cash flows to return to, to shareholders through buybacks and dividends, then the present value for a 10% return when they hit these numbers is 136. Disregard this 2021 that's uh, old, so we just change the number, we'll do it later. So 136, thus Disney's undervalued for a 10% return and fairly valued for a 13% return. That's something very, very interesting. Let's take a look at a more positive return here, 12% and then let's say 7% beyond the market more exuberant and then you have your present value sum that Morningstar has and around 170. Still really, really good. But let's say there is competition and they grow only 5% and then 4% discount rate, 10% and then valuations in the market goes to 12. Then still, this is the present value sum. Now, the question is, will they reward shareholders with these cash flows? This is 10, 12 billion. Unlikely that they will reward us directly. They will always reinvest and all this competition and everything. So I would say that, let's say we have to cut those in half and divide the present value that will not be distributed and the rest will be kept invested for growth. So I'm cutting that in half for all the scenarios. And you can see that as I am more conservative, 
and let's say they just pay out as dividends and everything half, then it is fairly valued now for a 10% return on the basis of what we know. So nothing wrong with Disney now. If they can hit these cash flows, this is huge cash flows, it's 12 billion of pure value creation. They can do it, but there will certainly be ups and downs. So yes, the P ratio now is around 15 unexpected 12 billion in earnings when they hit it. So not that high if we consider the growth ahead, but there will always be issues with growth ahead. And that's why you also see these ups and downs with Disney. So big declines, big declines, then straight up to the moon, then down again. So it's not unusual for the market to be very optimistic about Disney, very pessimistic, very optimistic, very pessimistic. So if you want to trade it, I don't think Disney will go bankrupt, even if it has 50 billion of debt. That is unfortunately an issue that doesn't make it a bargain or a value investing where you can be totally safe. So that is something to be concerned about. But still, if they can manage it, it should be a good buy, an okay buy for a likely 10% conservative return. On the positive side, you can always watch, okay, they will create this ecosystem of sports, of this, of that, of Disney, of brands, of everything. And can they do more on top of that ecosystem with the parks, with everything? Likely, yes. And you never know how much are they going to make in cash flows when they work out everything and make economies of scale and everything. That is the positive unknown. Of course, short term, the stock can go lower, the stock can go higher, depending on the news, on the earnings, on the happenings. That's investing, that's life. But at the end, just think about Disney, about all the brands and everything, and whether you want to own it for the long term. It was once a dividend stock, now it isn't anymore. So that also changes might be again in the future. So it is about owning the business and see how that ownership fits your portfolio at the current price. The lower you buy it, of course, it's better. For now, it looks like a good business at an okay price.